Hello, fight fans, and welcome to Boxing and Coffee. I'm that boxing writer, Jeremy Harridges. This is the show that infuses a little bit of coffee into your boxing. Uh, so make sure a few things. Uh, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, I'm trying to continuously put out content. I always say that. Those are famous last words. I'm going to keep putting out content, and then I'll get a string of interviews and have a bunch of write-ups, and it doesn't happen. But uh, hey. There's always going to be interviews on this channel. There's always going to be something boxing related and a little bit of coffee related. So definitely like and subscribe. That would help me out a bunch. I appreciate it. This video is going to be focusing on Alexander Povetkin versus Dillian White to the rematch coming to you in just one day right now um, on Saturday, March 27th in the States here. It's on DAZN starting at 2 p.m., I believe. Um, that's Eastern time. So get ready for that. Before we go into all that, a few things. Last night on Thursday, we had the Ring City USA card from Puerto Rico between Amanda Serrano and Daniela Bermudez, which was a fantastic fight. You had seven-time, seven-division, nine-time champion in Amanda Serrano and three-division champion Daniela Bermudez going at it. It was a fantastic fight. All the credit in the world to Daniela Bermudez. She stood in there. She traded with Serrano, who's a fantastic power puncher, but Serrano was too much. Serrano stopped her in the ninth round with a, a beautiful uh, left hook, right hook combination to the body that, that dropped Bermudez, and that was it. I really think it was the left hook that started the damage, but that right hook couldn't have felt good either, and that was it. Bermudez wasn't getting up, and I said it even before. On Twitter, as I was watching the fight, those hooks to the body, especially that left hook, that's Amanda Serrano's punch. I could see when she was landing it that Bermudez was wincing. She wasn't reacting well. And it was like all of a sudden she landed a good one. Mm, she'd stop. She'd start backpedaling. I could see it right there that that the hurt was there. And she was trying to conceal it. But Serrano, being a, a smart, intelligent fighter that she is, she saw that it was having an impact. Went back to it in round nine, and that was it. Fantastic performance from Amanda Serrano. She did a great job, and she deserves it. Excited to see her fight again, sometime soon, hopefully. Also on that card, you had Eduardo Baez, one of the Baez twins, uh, defeating Abimael Ortiz in fantastic fashion. He just was go, 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 go. There was no stopping him. He just kept throwing punches, and it was a really a, a beautiful thing to watch. On the uh, co-main event, Carlos Caraballo versus uh, Leonard Baez stops Leonard uh, Leonardo Baez in round four. Corner stoppage. It should have come earlier. Uh, probably a good 30 seconds. Should have stopped that fight earlier. Should have called the action. And um, Leonardo Baez showed a lot of heart. He, he gave it his all, but he just couldn't hang with um, Carlos Caraballo. Caraballo was just too quick. And, and just intelligent the way he fought with his counterpunching style. He allowed uh, Baez to just walk in. I mean, Baez was just walking straight into everything and kind of awkwardly hunching forward. He was just set up perfectly for, for, for Carabao to, to take advantage, and he did, stopping him in round four, corner stoppage. Great night of action. I keep loving what Ring City USA is doing, and, and I can't wait to see what they have going forward. Before we go on to... Pavetkin and White. A little bit about the coffee. This is my my last day with Get the F Out of Bed Coffee, which is a specialty limited run from Dark Matter Coffee. And I made this cup a, a little bit stronger today. Um, it's ground up and, and, and I do the French press as you see in the intro video. That's that's really me making coffee. Um, and that's how I make all these coffees. They're all they're all French pressed and, and in there. And uh, I made this one a little bit stronger today and definitely got some more flavor out of it. It's a good coffee. You know, I, I really like what, what Dark Matter is doing with it. Um, as far as my ratings for it, I would give the aroma an 8. I'd give the taste a 7. And I'd give the after effect <laughs> a 7. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's your regular amount of caffeine. So seven is about going to be the, the base level for, for every coffee. How do you feel after? Unless it's a very weak coffee where I'm not getting any caffeine out of it or not enough caffeine out of it. Um, but yeah, you know, you get a good amount of caffeine out of it. It's typical coffee. 
Um, the taste. I definitely feel the taste on the sides of my tongue, which is good. That's a, a sign of good coffee. I'm willing to bet that this is a, most definitely a, an Arabica bean coffee uh, fully. Um, as far as my rationale for the seven and not higher, because it's like uh, I could go maybe seven and a half, close to eight. Uh, it's just a little sweeter for me than than what I care for. I like more of a, a, a bolder less sweet, I guess you could say. I, I'm not a, a big fan of, of of like a sweet bean coffee. Um, and again, that's that's just the way that, that the coffee comes out. It's not like they added really anything to it, um, but it's the particular coffee bean that, that has that taste. Um, so a little bit sweeter than my taste, but uh, overall, I'd give it a, a strong seven. Uh, and again, don't look at that as a, as a poor score. I'm a, I'm a very tough critic here. So anything over five is positive. It's a high-end coffee, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's very good. Again, it's a limited run, so this one you probably can't find. They're always doing something different over at Dark Matter Coffee, and I would give it my recommendation. So go check out uh, Dark Matter Coffee. I've got the website linked in, in the, the, the film's bio below, so check it out. I'll have a new coffee in the upcoming episode, so just look out for that. All right, on to boxing. Alexander Povetkin versus Dillian White 2 from Gibraltar. Now, when this fight was <laughs> announced, I said to myself, where is Gibraltar? I've heard of the Rock of Gibraltar, right? You know, that's a very common term. Where is it? And after further inspection via Google Maps, it's a small little boom there at the bottom of, of Spain. And it's a, a British province that's that's there. And yeah, that's Gibraltar. Mostly a, a great tourism spot. It looks absolutely beautiful. I've been uh, checking out uh, Chris Lloyd's uh, Twitter feed of the, the pictures from there. And it, it, it looks beautiful. looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the scenery is fantastic. Go check out Matchroom Boxing on, on Twitter and see some of the shots there. It looks absolutely majestic. I'm putting that on my bucket list for, for travel uh, places, destinations, right? But uh, let's talk about this one. Alexander Povetkin versus Dillian White to the rematch. The first one was a fantastic bout. Crazy, right? It only went five rounds, but what a five rounds it was. Um, to help you guys remember, this happened back in August of 2020. Povetkin was down twice in round four. It looked like Dillian White was going to put him away. He was going to move on. He was going to make things interesting. This was uh, a WBC title eliminator. Well, at least he was the mandatory, right? So he was supposed to be the next in line to, to get his shot. But after knocking Pavetkin down twice in round four, Pavetkin being the wise, crafty veteran, tough puncher that he is, Sneaks up with the perfect uppercut, knocks Dillian White senseless, KO, fights over, Alexander Povetkin wins. Now, that was the first fight. Now, according to CompuBox stats, I think it's kind of interesting. Now, yes, this, this fight only went uh, five rounds. However, I think the numbers are interesting. Total punches, White actually was behind. In total punches and that's not even due to um, being hurt you know a lot of times when the numbers fluctuate because when a fighter gets hurt it usually means that the the other the opponent is jumping on them right they've got them hurt and they're throwing a flurry and that's when you see those numbers really escalate that didn't happen this was a one-off home run uppercut of a punch so the the numbers weren't inflated due to uh white being hurt or anything because he wasn't hurt it just kind of just suddenly happened so looking at the numbers i'm sorry i don't have my glasses on right now uh white threw 167 total punches to pavetkin's 175 so pavetkin is the more active fighter which i think is really interesting when taking a look at those numbers so something to keep in mind there uh now on the flip side of that the connection uh the connected punches the landed punches Pavetkin landed 34 of his punches compared to White's 63. And that's interesting because that's a huge differential in, in connect percentage. 
White uh, connected 37.7% of his punches to 19.4% of Povetkin's punches. So 37.7 for White, 19.4 for Povetkin. So White throwing fewer punches, but landing significantly more at a significantly higher connect percentage. Doesn't matter if you get caught with an uppercut and get knocked out. But I think it's important to keep those, those numbers in line in mind for the this upcoming fight. So let's talk about this fight. All right, Pavetkin owns a victory, a KO, a sensational KO victory over Dillian White. But again, this is such an interesting fight because of those two fourth round knockdowns on White's part. It, it, if Pavetkin just went out there and just dominated White, we wouldn't be having a rematch, right? The reason that we're having it is because it was so competitive. It was so dynamic in just five rounds. What does that mean for this fight? Things to keep in consideration. Again, these are things that, that we should have considered in the first fight that were there. Age. Pavetkin's 42. Uh, White's 32. So a 10-year age difference. That youth that, that White brings into it, I, it's going to always make a difference. However, I did talk to Alexander Povetkin several days ago during a media call. He says he feels 25, and he looks like it. He looks pretty good. Time doesn't lie. It, it, it's, it's always going to be a factor, and typically when you're an older fighter going into later rounds, that's when you have to worry. Size. Obviously, White has the size and reach advantage. He's two inches taller, three inches uh, longer reach than Povetkin. He can keep Povetkin at the end of his punches if he boxes wisely and doesn't get sucked into a firefight. The other thing to consider, this fight has been rescheduled multiple times because Povetkin had COVID, obviously bad enough to where it had to push that fight back. Now, he downplayed it saying, I don't have any uh, lasting effects of that. You know, it's not bothering me. But according to reports, he was hospitalized twice because of COVID, and he had a hard time getting over it. I, I, I have to think that that's going to make a difference. But just based on the raw intangibles that are there and the natural advantages that he has over Pavetkin, I have to say that I think he has the edge in this fight. Don't expect quite the same things to happen from the first fight. I think this is going to be a little bit different. White is going to have to be more cautious in this fight. N obviously getting caught with a with an uppercut and getting knocked out senseless like that is going to make a difference. So I think he's going to be a lot more cautious. I think he's going to try to use his length more. I think he's going to try to take this into the later rounds and he's just going to try to win. That that's what I think. However, I think he's going to hurt Pavetkin. Eventually, he's going to have to jump on that opportunity. So with all that being said, I expect Dillian White to stop Alexander Pavetkin somewhere in the 7, 8, 9 range. To, to try to nail it down, I'm going to go with a round 8 stoppage for Dillian White. I hate making predictions, all right? But I'm doing it because, hey, uh, I'm a boxing writer and uh, people want to know, what do you think? That's what I think. Dillian White stoppage in 8, that's my official prediction. We'll see if it comes true. Odds right now, Pavetkin is a two to one underdog. Not surprising, almost three to one on some of the on, on some of the betting brokerages. I looked at Odd Shark, where they compile uh, a collection of odds. So two to one, nearly three to one odds against Pavetkin, and just from the things that I'm telling you, I think that's what some of the odds makers are seeing. That just naturally, White has the edge in this thing. He nearly put him away in the first fight. He got careless, got a little sloppy. And, and got caught with a punch. I don't think that's going to happen the second time around. I think he's going to be more cautious. I think he's going to be wiser. Expect him to make adjustments. Expect him to win this fight. Other things I love in this fight, uh, in this fight card from top to bottom, Campbell Hatton, son of Ricky Hatton, makes his debut, 19 years old. It's just exciting having a Hatton in the ring again, especially one that looks so much like Ricky Hatton. I mean, he looks just like his father. Seems like a really nice young man. So I'm rooting for Campbell Hatton uh, making his pro debut. Uh, best of luck to him. Fabio Wardley versus Eric Molina. I think Fabio Wardley is going to take care of Eric Molina. Eric Molina has been highly inactive. He's old. I think he's 38. 
I, I'm giving this one to to Wardley by KO. And then a very interesting matchup between Ted Cheeseman and James Metcalf. James Metcalf is 32 years old, I believe, a little bit older, but undefeated. Uh, Ted Cheeseman's coming off that nice victory against Sam Eggington. I'm taking Cheeseman. I think it's going to go to the distance, but I think it's going to be a, a fun fight to watch. So something else to watch. Uh, but but three fights on the undercard that I'm really focused in on. There's others on there too, but those are the three that jump out to me, and I'm looking forward to it. Let's see what happens. Most importantly, who do you think is going to win Pavetkin versus White too? I want to hear from you. Give me comments. Give me feedback. Give me suggestions. Comment below. I want to hear from you. Who wins this fight? Again, I'm going White by round eight stoppage. What do you say? Let me know. Let me hear it. Who's winning this fight? Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Boxing and coffee. Give me suggestions on coffee. I'm always taking notes. What do people want to hear about? Which coffees? Let me hear it. Well, that's it for me today. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.